Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Um, so Kingsley is here. This is my labor and delivery story. I'm um, sorry I haven't been around. It's been so busy. Um, I haven't gotten much sleep. Um, I'm a first time mom, so I didn't know what to expect. I didn't have any brothers and sisters that I raised. You know, I have, I have, I have brothers, but uh, we have different moms, and uh, so I haven't really grew up with brothers and sisters so i don't know what it's like to take care of the baby but he's a little kingsley i'm feeding her i hope she doesn't cry well she's seven days old today she was born on august 21st 2017 and um so basically my uh de you know my delivery and labor story um, so I went into labor oh, almost at 40 weeks uh, yeah at 40 weeks so my due date was pretty much August 20 or August 21st and I went into labor on August 21st um, they said you know at first they said you're 40 weeks is August 20 then they said August 22nd um, so I pretty much went on 40 days on 40 weeks and uh, I went uh, with my fiance, we went to have sushi, and then, um, so I started having um, contractions on the, 20, on the 20th um, at night. I've never had contractions, but I felt like something was happening, and, um, and it was painful, uh, but I am very, um, I doubt myself a lot. So I felt like maybe they're not contractions, maybe it's just my stomach really hurts. And, you know, I doubted myself. And um, so I um, basically, <clears throat> so, um, but they got in stronger and stronger and stronger. So I, I waited till about 4 a.m. And they got pretty painful and they would come every five minutes. Um, Lenox Hale Hospital, um, that's where I delivered to New York City on 77th Street in Lexington, is a really, really, really great hospital. Um, they took excellent care of me. I'm, I'm very, very thankful. And um, So I started having contractions back to, you know, and once again, I'm a person that doubts herself a lot, so I kind of like, the pain was very strong. But I waited, waited at 4 a.m. We went to the hospital, and at 4:30 I was admitted, and and the, I was admitted next with another lady, who um, came in at the same time. They took us to triage room, and the lady gave birth right then and there, um, and I heard her give birth like through through the curtain, pretty much. They were checking her in, and it was like one, two minutes and then we heard a baby cry and um that was pretty she was screaming and that was just you know it was very um a little bit scary for me because i've never experienced giving birth and and this was happening and she was screaming and and um but anyway so i was admitted to triage room and they started uh they said how's your pain and i said well it's okay i could still handle it but once again the pain was pretty strong and the contractions were coming every five minutes and I knew it was like I kind of knew in my gut it was the real deal because it was very painful but I downplayed my pain I was like you know I was like I'm okay I'm okay you know I was hoping they would admit me and everything so they checked me um, and I was dilated only one centimeter which is like your cervix dilates uh, before you give birth and it has to be I think four to five centimeters for them to admit you. And they said, well, it's a false labor. Um, uh, and I was in severe pain, but like I said, I, I, I was trying to be positive and I was like, you know, they're gonna give me something for the pain. So I was just, um, and they said, no, you have to go home, go to Central Park, walk. Um, and I came downstairs and I was in such severe pain and the contractions started coming every two, three minutes. Uh, well, they dismissed me. They said, you know, you should go home because it's a false labor. 
and I started crying and this is where I just want to say um, this is my advice I guess to moms to first-time moms that don't know what to expect listen to your gut feeling because the doctors do uh, they they evaluate you based on the symptoms and based on what you tell them but they really they're not in your skin and you have to advocate for yourself and if you feel like you're in severe pain you should say that um, because they tend to downplay unless you're you know I mean I don't know if you if you've ever been to an emergency room unless you're like dying from a heart attack like unless there's you need attention they usually downplay and say okay go home this is not an emergency because they have to do that they have to attend to people that need help right then and there and um, so they uh, so I came back and um, I couldn't walk because they told me to go home and, and just be uh, you know walk in Central Park and rest and I, I just looked at her and I was like I'm in severe pain so I went back and I actually stood up for myself and I said, you know, I'm, you might not think I'm in labor, but I'm in such severe pain, contractions come every two minutes, please just give me something for the pain, um, if that's the case, you know, because I can't right now, I, I was in severe pain, I wanted to crawl on the walls, you know, it was very, very severe pain and the contractions came like every two, three minutes, they were just like very steady. Um, they gave me something for the pain, not epidural. They gave me like a milder, like a drip with something for the pain. And I started feeling better and I, I fell asleep. And at 2 p.m. I woke up, the doctor came in and I was dilated five centimeters and I went into labor. It was a real thing. So I guess my point is that you have to trust your gut feeling no matter what the doctors say and trust yourself, trust your body and advocate for yourself. Um, that's important because no one is in your skin. No one knows what your threshold for, threshold for pain is. So I was admitted. Um, then I was given epidural. And epidural is like the best drug in the world. You feel like you're in heaven. You feel so wonderful and so great and so peaceful. And the contractions just keep coming. And you're like, this is the best of a... Like, you don't feel them at all. Um, they, they came like every two minutes and... For the next, basically from 2 p.m. to 1 a.m., so for the next 11 hours, I didn't feel anything. I felt, like, so great. I mean, you know, like, you feel a little pressure, but it feels amazing. You feel, I mean, it's the best feeling in the world. I don't know what drugs they give you, but it's amazing. Um, I felt really, really good. I was sleeping mostly, um, you know, and then was sleeping in and out um, and then they came I was dilated not 10 centimeters at around um, 10 or <clears throat> and I tried to push and I pushed I pushed I pushed I pushed and it didn't work and we pushed again and we pushed again and it didn't work and uh, basically I ended up pushing for three hours straight and uh, I gave up at some point. I don't remember anymore because I was just they were giving me oxygens in between um, contractions, and, uh, and then when finally after three hours um, it started working, that was very, 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 very painful. Um, I don't know if epidural wore off. I hear some people say that they didn't feel anything; they just felt pressure. I felt um, I started screaming. I started crying. Um, I don't know what I was saying, but I was like, take, you know, I, I, I was maybe a little bit mean, I don't know. Um, I was in severe pain. I was just like in the mode of survival, just like an animal instinct kicked in. I don't remember what I was saying, what I was, but I was screaming, I was crying. Um, and finally at 1.12, she was born and she's six pounds and three ounces and, uh, um, she's healthy, she's beautiful, and uh, it was, it's a, it's a painful experience. Um, they took her, um, her temperature was high, my temperature was high, so they took her to um, ICU, and I went to visit her very soon in ICU, and uh, um, I had stitches and everything. It was, it was a hard, hard labor. 
for me. Uh, <clears throat> and then we went to... The doctors were excellent. I can't thank them enough. There were, I think, f one doctor was... I was surrounded by nurses, doctors, pediatricians. They were so, so good and so supportive and so excellent. And they're not enough gratitude that I can express for their hard work. I mean, um, these people were very, very caring at Lenox Hill. Um, and uh, <clears throat> my doctor was actually Mary Parks. She was really, um, I just want to thank her because she was... And I had a nurse, uh, Lola, that just these two people were extremely, extremely um, kind to me and so, so supportive and so great. And so I, I just want to thank them. Um, and um, so I went to visit my daughter in ICU and it was all these little babies um, in special pods and doctors feeding them and white and everything was white and doctors in white coats and it felt like it was a spaceship where they make babies you know it was just like all these babies and all these people in white robes <clears throat> feeding the babies everything is bright luminescent and it was just uh, a spaceship experience and <clears throat> <clears throat> so that's my story thank you so much his little Kingsley ooh, ooh. We're still learning. Um, no sleep so far. Every two hours, feeding, uh, diaper change, crying, and, you know, everything. So I don't sleep through 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 nights. So this is my new schedule. I'm getting used to it. Um, thank you so much uh, for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye.